Hey everyone. So today we're on the 13th day of our preparation for the consecration of Mary. And we're going to be looking at paragraphs 90 and 95 in the True Devotion written by St. Louis de Montfort. And here he's making a transition. So for the last two days, we've been looking at characteristics of a true devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And at this point, he's going to go to the opposite extreme. He's now going to look at false devotions to Mary. So we've got these few basic truths that we've already established. You know, this is what you need to have in your devotion to Our Lady for it to be something that is a true devotion, which is a helpful devotion, which is a good devotion. And so we have these basic guidelines in place, but we still haven't determined exactly what it should look like. We haven't fleshed it out yet. We have the skeletal system over here, like, okay, these are these non-negotiable elements of a true devotion. But we're not, we haven't yet established just what true devotion is yet. And so before we get to that, before we finally like see the whole body of the true devotion, we're going to now look at what perhaps some distortions of a devotion to Mary can look like. Or as St. Louis de Montfort puts it, false devotions. And they're particularly insidious because they have an aspect of truth to them. Like there's something which is, sounds reasonable in these false devotions but they're missing something essential, which makes them detrimental to our spiritual life. And Louis de Montfort says that this is an issue with Marian devotion in particular. You know, it's not as if you have many other devotions, like to the brown scapular, for example. That's a, that's a devotion. But it's not as if there are people who are distorting devotion to the brown scapular. But Louis de Montfort says that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, there are distortions. And he says that the devil leaves other devotions alone and counterfeits most, mostly those directed to Jesus and Mary. So it's on account of this diabolic insidiousness, his trickery, that we're going to find these false devotions more so when it comes to the Blessed Virgin Mary than other kinds of devotions. So St. Louis de Montfort is now going to explain them in order that we might avoid them. And then he's going to get to the true devotion in order to actually practice it. And when he gets to the, perhaps we can say that one of the other benefits of looking at these false devotions is that we want to avoid anything which is less than the best. We want to choose the devotion to Mary, which is the most perfect, the most pleasing to her, the one that gives the greatest glory to God, and the one that sanctifies us the most. So we don't want to be like content with a mediocre devotion to Mary. We want a really solid, thorough devotion to her. So, there are seven kinds of false devotions that St. Louis de Montfort has found. Today, we're just going to be looking at two of them, and then we're going to see the rest of them, the five, re the five others, tomorrow. So, let's also remember that as we look through these different false devotions, these are devotions, or these are perhaps, we can say, ways of looking at Mary that Catholics do. So Louis de Montfort is not talking here about people that outright deny the importance of Mary. Like, that's not a false devotion. That's something com that's in a different species. We're talking about people that say the Blessed Virgin Mary was immaculately conceived, that she was perpetually virgin, that she's the mother of God, that, you know, we pray to her. But they don't have this proper understanding of how we pray to her, her or how important she is. So... We're not talking about people that deny Mary. We're talking about people that have a misconception of her. The first false devotion or devotees are the critical devotees. So devotion, which is critical. And St. Louis de Montfort says that this is primarily found in proud scholars. So we can think of academic individuals, very intellectually gifted, but, and they have a vague devotion to Mary, but they criticize all the practices of piety that simple people fulfill in a pious manner to honor their good mother. They question all the miracles and stories, even those recorded by trustworthy authors who demonstrate the mercy and power of the Virgin Mary. So these accounts, for example, of healings through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary or apparitions of Mary which have been confirmed, you know, because there are apparitions which have been invalidated, which the church has said we should not be invoking Mary under those titles. And so there is need for discretion there. But they deny outright, they deny basically all the apparitions, all the miracles, all the stories of Mary and her power and her intercession. And then when they get shown what the Holy Fathers have said about Mary, for example, 
you know, the popes, what they wrote, what they write in their encyclicals. These proud scholars respond by saying that the popes were just speaking rhetorically or they, they alter the interpretation. You know, the, the Holy Fathers were, uh, were exaggerating a little bit there. So they, they pay heed to what the Holy Fathers, what the popes have to say, but they, they reinterpret their words or they downplay them. And so, once again, we're dealing with Catholics that respect the words of the pope, but they aren't going to accept, like, literally what the pope says about the Blessed Virgin Mary, because the popes have always promoted devotion to her of all kinds. So de Montfort says that this kind of false devotees are very dangerous because they commit a grave injustice towards devotion to the Virgin Mary. They think that, yeah, in theory it's good, but they, are, they discourage people from becoming too devoted to the Blessed Virgin Mary. The second false devotion are the scrupulous devotees. These are the people that have this either-or mentality. They fear that if you honor the mother, you're somehow going to be dishonoring the son. And so they go into churches, for example, and they will see that, oh, look, at there's all these people there praying the rosary. There's all these people in front of the altar of Our Lady, but they're not in front of the altar of the Blessed Sacrament. So they have this kind of dichotomy established where there is this, or this dialectic established, where you have to either be Marian or you have to be Christological. But they're acting as if the two things were incompatible, as if the people that were praying to Mary were somehow not praying to Jesus through Mary. So it's a very insidious kind of inference that they draw. It's a subtle snare of the evil one under the pretext of promoting a greater good. So they say, look, Jesus is God. Jesus is the Word incarnate. Jesus is the second person of the Most Holy Trinity. We should go to Jesus, not Mary. But they never give more honor to Jesus than when we give it to him through his mother. They forget that. They forget that in honoring the mother, we are honoring the son. The two are inseparable. We honor her simply and solely to honor him all the more perfectly. That's the very first characteristic of a, of a real Marian devotion. It's possible you'll find people that are just fixed on Mary and they never go beyond Mary to Jesus. They never have this conception of praying through Mary to Jesus. But a not real Marian devotion has that aspect of Jesus as the end. We go to her only as a way leading to the goal we seek, Jesus, her son. Even the Hail Mary we say, which is a prayer which has been sanctioned by the church, we, you know, it's recommended by all the popes, it's, it's in the Bible. In the Hail Mary, we first bless Our Lady and then we bless the Son. We say, blessed art thou, Mary, among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. So we're not saying that Mary is greater and that's why we say her that she, we, we bless her first, nor are we saying that she's equal, and so we just have to, we could flip it around either way. But in order to bless Jesus more perfectly, we should first bless Mary. So there's no need to choose between the two of them. We can have our cake and eat it as well. We are Catholics. We, we, we choose both. Now, Tomorrow we're going to be looking at the rest of the, the or the other kinds of uh, false devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. But for now, today we're just going to go ahead to the meditation. And it's, it's going to, this is a transitional day in the sense that up until now, we have been looking at the, the, in, the snares of the world. We're trying to get rid of the spirit of the world that is in us. We're trying to identify those things that distinguish the spirit of the world from the spirit of Christ. But today, instead of doing that, we're going to be considering ourselves. So we've been looking at the world and its maxims, its dangers, temptations, but now we're looking inwardly. And in a specific way, we're trying to grow in self-knowledge. And on the one hand, that's, also, that's going to require us to recognize ourselves as sinners. Like, we, are, we, are, we have sins, and therefore, we need a Savior. So this is going to be a, a theme for the, for the next week. And to help us to meditate, to grow in this self-knowledge, we're going to be using texts and meditations and thoughts from St. Alphonsus, who's another great Marian author. And he's going to help us to grow in that knowledge of self so that we can see our need for Jesus and therefore be all the more enthusiastic about going to him through his mother. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee.